local students are getting the chance to get out of the classroom and get their hands dirty. We headed out to Jefferson Hills Intermediate School to see how they're swapping out pens and papers for chickens and eggs. It started out in 2017 where I just hatched them in my classroom and for a couple years I would get rid of them. I'd send them on their way to the farm. And then a couple years in, uh, we kind of had this idea of keeping them here at school. It started out in the classroom and just an idea with some kids and to see their level of engagement with incubating, uh, going through the incubation process and, and the discovery learning to, to progress to just a, a small little coop that we had out front uh, right outside her window and she was able to keep an eye on it um, to this idea to build it and really embrace it and build it to something special. I ended up getting a West Jefferson Hills educational grant for $500 and we gave that to our wood shop and Mr. Benedict and his people created that back there. I think sometimes as the older we get the kids we're losing a lot of the funness like they're just they're still kids so they love no matter what we were doing if they were hatching in the middle of class we stopped what we were doing and we would watch the chickens, the eggs open up, and it was very exciting. The whole community really gets involved. I give Mrs. Conley all the credit in the world. She is a very creative, one of the most creative people I've ever met. She had this idea a few years ago, uh, and like any great educator, she ran with it. I just gave her some flexibility and some freedom to do what she does, and uh, the results have been fantastic. I grew up in Mount Lebanon, no chickens. We just had a lot of humans in our house, no chickens. It's really evolved. Like it just, it started out as just watching them hatch. And now they really do everything. They'll come out in the mornings, they let them out because we do enclose them at night because there's no roof. So we enclose them at night for predators, but then in the morning they let them out. They collect the eggs in the morning. By noon, they come out, they'll collect eggs. We get about eight to nine eggs a day. You're gonna go inside and then go to Miss Connie's room, and then you're gonna um, put them in egg cartons for the people who bought them. They put them in cartons, and they mark the dates of what date we hatched, what date they collected them, and then they we sell them online to the community. We put it on Facebook, we have a website, and they kept, I'll probably put three dozen in stock by Monday, in 20 minutes they're sold. I don't think normal is the right word. Uh, we do look for opportunities to make real world applications and I think what Mrs. Conley has done with this project over the last couple years has really extended the learning quite a bit for her kids uh, and the school and, and the entire community. This school, it's pretty fitting for our school because we do have a lot of opportunities throughout the building that aren't that you wouldn't see in every school. The learning doesn't stop as they're walking down the hallways. They're always constantly seeing something that's going on. Uh, upstairs we have a uh, TJ 3D lab in our hallway. And the kids can uh, visit the 3D lab and experience the TJ 3D printing experience with that. And uh, you know, it's just neat to see the kids walk by and stop and just check out what's going on. We have a poison dart frog exhibit. Um, we have fish aquariums located in all our science classrooms. So uh, yeah, definitely not a normal school, but we, as a school we always want to be the school that people are looking to and we're not looking to other schools for ideas. And I think over the past few years and in, in the programs uh, that we have, we are that school. And it's, it's nice and refreshing to see other districts come to want to know what's going on in West Jefferson Hills School District, in particular Jefferson Hills Intermediate School. They sign up, they can't wait to help. It's, it really has evolved into they do everything to the point where sometimes when they put them away, they don't count to 10. And I'll come out Monday morning, there'll be one floating around. We have eight babies in there now. I love that they're fluffy and they're so cute. We were supposed to put them here two years ago, but with COVID, a lot of things changed. But finally, this past year, he, and I have to give a shout out to our custodial maintenance crew. They take care of them all summer. They, they take very, that's part of their routine. We'll get a whole nother coop next year. The high school's gonna build us another coop. The kids love the chicks, like the babies. They, we chicks it. They, we have little cages and they take them home Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and they walk, they carry them out. They're so proud. Everyone's like, you get to take them home. Most parents want to do it for just one night because they're loud. They're very supportive. The, I have to give, like, they, the, obviously they buy the eggs, but we even have a spot on our website to like donate a bag of food. And we've had parents just donate back. They'll give money for a bag of food. I'll get random Amazon gift cards with a message that just says buy something for the girls. It's just not a school thing. This is a district-wide collaboration. We got our high school involved. Um, we had grant, grant funding from the district. 
So everybody pitched in a little bit and made this thing possible for our kids. <laughs> you know, chickens, they're not adults talking to them. They're not teachers just teaching uh, math and reading. It, like I said, it's real world applications. Uh, you get to actually see uh, and experience the educational process and, it, and, it, and through just basic interactions with chickens. Really interesting and so much fun for everyone in that. We'll be right back after the break with more.